right, let's hear from Frank Vogley, speaking with Mike Trudell and the media on Zoom. Hey, Frank, what did you think happened tonight? Uh, we got outplayed in the second half. Um, simplest way to put it. You know, we didn't defend at the at the rate that we've been the last few games or, or that we did, that we did in the first half. Um, you know, they downsized with the second unit, gave us some problems. Um, you know, and then offensively, we just we got hesitant, tried to overpass a few different times. And, uh, you know, we didn't have a, a, a great offensive fourth quarter to try to close things up. Just that final sequence there after you get the rebound, uh, what was your thinking? And sometimes, of course, you get a, a good shot if you go down and don't call the timeout. But how did that play evolve? And what were you seeing before you finally got one? Yeah, we had a, a chance to attack, attack in transition before their defense was set. Uh, we wanted to look at that when uh, you know when it was clear that we weren't going to get a great look in transition. We called a timeout, and um, you know we got a decent look with Bron, you know, coming coming up to gut. Okay. Uh, Frank, you were teed up for um, your reaction to Schroeder getting pushed to the ground uh, or like, taking contact and falling to the ground. And then there was that sequence where LeBron was called for a travel and then Draymond scored in the lane and some of the guys were called for a travel. How much do you think the officiating affected tonight's outcome? I don't have anything to say about the officiating. Dan? Frank, um, how did you feel about kind of just the overall late game organization? Um, it seemed like you guys had a little of a hard time to kind of get in and out of stuff. Um, yeah, really we got we got hesitant, you know, and uh, you know that's an area. You know, it's an early uh, early game in a season um, that you watch that, and it's an opportunity to learn from it. You know, we uh, like I said, we got we just got hesitant uh, on the offensive end, a little casual. Um, you know, I'd say it's at certain points in the game. Um, which you can't do with a lead against a team team like that that has great firepower, and um, you know I th their pressure was was decent. Uh, I thought most uh, most offensive possessions we were organized, but you know like I said we either hesitant or or overpassed, and um, you know has had a lot of lost possessions in the fourth. Uh, Kyle, Frank. Um, Obviously, you know, you guys are on the winning streak. Your last four games have been blowouts. Do you feel like, um, you know, perhaps you can maybe take a little complacency from that and, and that might have contributed to what happened today? No, I think if, if we came out sluggish, well, you could say that. I, I thought we came out uh, with great energy, built up a, a big early lead. Uh, we just didn't sustain it. You know, um, you know, just one of those lessons that we can learn from. Last two, Bill. Uh, Kyle kind of asked my question, but I guess could you speak a little bit more about the, um, the about the lesson of complacency and, and taking your foot off the gas, and, and how can you apply that in a season when you are going to have a target on your back the rest of the way? Well, yeah, it's a forty-eight minute game. You know, our guys understand that, and um, you know, sometimes if you do it and you don't take a take a loss, you don't learn a lesson. So, um, you know, hopefully our guys will learn that lesson from this game. You know, uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't all, all complacency. I mean, you credit the Warriors. Uh, we didn't handle, um, you know, what we we felt were some some bad calls. Uh, we let it distract our focus some. And um, you know, like I said, offensively, look, we've been really passing the ball well and, and trusting the pass. And there was a few possessions we had, we had great possessions where the guy didn't take the shot because he was thinking one more. So, you know, those are good problems. And um, you know, we'll go to the tape and and, and correct it. Yovan. Hey, Frank, uh, you mentioned that yesterday you guys spent a lot of time going over the intricacies of, of defending Steph. How did you feel you did in that regard tonight and maybe breaking it down first half or second half? Yeah, I mean, uh, again, I'll have to look at the tape. There was, I mean, he's got the ball the whole game, you know, so uh, there was plenty of good defensive possessions, uh, you know, plenty where we had breakdowns, uh, either sending them to the screen or, or um, you know, protecting uh, protecting the rim when we took the ball out of his hands, you know. But overall, we, we just didn't contain the ball like we like we're capable of. Um, we turned the ball over too much offensively, which let them get out and transition some. And Sugar coated, embarrassing loss for the Lakers, losing huge leads, not putting a Warrior team away when you had ample opportunities, and you can get away with that some nights, but it's going to come bite you many times in the NBA, and it did tonight, James. Yeah, it bit him tonight.
Um, you know, they were like a team that, uh, you know, was absent. Uh, you know, Clay Thompson, uh, a young team, a scrappy team. I was very impressed with uh, what Steve Kerr has done with this team. He got them motivated to play. Uh, but, yeah, the Lakers, uh, you know, when, when you have a chance to put away and you don't, and I think what's happened over uh, this span of wins, uh, they, you know, uh, been used to playing a little bit slow and then turn on, and they've taken care of business. But tonight, um, it just seemed like they were just flat. It seemed like they just couldn't respond to what Golden State was doing to them, not getting good shot opportunity, not connected defensively like they normally are. Um, and so, yeah, it was, a, it was a lackluster kind of a performance, particularly in the fourth quarter. What if I come to you before the uh, pregame show and said, hey, by the way, Ali, uh, Steph Curry only going to go for 12. <laughs> I would have stopped you there. Uh, Steph Curry is going to only go <laughs> three for 12 <laughs> from three. The Lakers will lead by 19 in the first quarter, but they're going to lose the game. You know, I think it's so crazy. Kind of, yeah. And the bench will play great. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think that's probably what's so mind-boggling because after starting out the way they did and were able to manage that 19-point yeah. lead in the first, you would have thought things were going towards the Lakers' way for the night. But I think what you also learn is what we've continued to preach, it's what they know inside that locker room, is that they are the defending champs. And every single night, you are going to get your opponent's best shot. And also with that comes players who may outplay themselves. I mean, Kelly Uber is averaging 11 points this season. We're talking about how he can't even throw into the ocean. He has 23. 23. His season high. Pascal off the bench. Uh, yeah. Ties his season high. 19. I mean, guys are just playing out of their minds. So, Andrew Miller, our graphics producer, he's, he's a Bay Area, guy, Bay Area guy. He's a huge Warrior fan. We told him to build a fourth quarter collapse. Uh, full screen, and he did. And I think he did it with a smile on his face because <laughs> uh, it was a collapse, colossal collapse. Uh, the Warriors outscored the Lakers 34 to 21. Field goals were 14 of 23, 6 of 19. Lakers an embarrassing one for nine from three. But here's some other ones, James. They were up nine with five minutes left in this game. They didn't yeah. score for over four minutes after that. They had four turnovers in the final few minutes. Warriors went on an 11-0 run. I, I mean, pick which one's the worst, I don't know. All, Lakers all, didn't deserve it. All, all of the above, Peter. And you know, it's something when you're used to winning, like I said, the Lakers defense has been, you know, pretty good and they're used to winning. And I think you have to be aware of that internal clock. It says, okay, we'll be able to turn it on. But what happens is Golden State has an internal clock too. And they turned it on as well. They weren't gonna be denied. And so they just couldn't turn it. I think it they turned it off somewhere. They had a 19-point lead and never was able to get back your ball game. They couldn't just turn the switch on and get defense going, layups. Uh, you know, the bench players for Golden State out hustled. It's things that we normally don't see, we saw uh, in the fourth quarter in particular. Yeah, I mean, this is a Warriors team, you know, minus Clay, as we mentioned. Draymond's getting back, Steph's getting back. It's a young team. They also the Lakers 67-49. Here's the thing, Allie. The Lakers are not going to be perfect. Right. I know we want them to be every single night, but the Warriors played harder tonight. Yeah. 67-49 in the second half. You know, coming in, Steve Kerr made a point that they're just not in sync right now offensively. I think they turned the corner mm -hmm. of it tonight because I think at the end of the day, you mentioned how different the Warriors are to what mm -hmm. we're so accustomed to seeing. But their system, their style of play, and who they are going to be and want to be about because you still have that guy, that dominant force in Steph Curry yep. running the show, they're still going to pass the ball. They're going to move that basketball offensively, and they're going to get after it on the defensive end of the floor. And when you put that all together and you continue to stick with that, good things will happen tonight. That's what happened for the Warriors. Yeah, and, and, and Frank said it. He said it early in this game when, when he said it to the team and when he was interviewed, like, you can't let this team hang around because of that guy. And sure, Steph was 2 for 11 at, at the time, but he hits the big three uh, with a minute left, put them up five. Uh, Kelly Uber, they had an interesting conversation about him. Reggie was saying, listen, he, you know, social media, fans around the NBA, he was supposed to be that guy to kind of fill the role. Clay uh, tore his Achilles, and he has really had an up and down rough season. Well, tonight came to play. Uh, 23 points, 9 of 18, James. Well, uh, you know, they didn't, they didn't take care of him early. He sat in that corner and just got busy. You know, that's where he was, down in that deep corner. And, you know, like, Ali said he did it everywhere, and the way they moved the ball, they're gonna make the defense give him something.
And you know, he was just under control, attacking the Lakers defense. And you know, they just never met his energy. So a guy who's been cold and hadn't been going his way, you always have to be aware of him. And you know, Allie mentioned early too. They are the defending